All right, so one of the most challenging things about painting cityscapes is painting the cars, but they're really not as difficult as they appear. It's just a matter of sorting out what the essential elements are. So, got the composition in the background here, cars right along here. Um, so right now, I'm just kind of mapping out big shapes and this right here, this big shape, <laughs> kind of a wedge shape, that is the cars right there. So now I am going to continue with burnt sienna and maybe start making some divisions here uh, for individual cars. I've got a square here that I'm gonna put onto my computer screen. And I don't know if you can see, but look at the top of the cars. Um, in the back, um, you know, by the tree, there's a car that kind of bumps up, but most of the tops line up. They're actually uh, perfectly level. So that's often the case. Usually the tops of the cars will line up, unless of course, like in the background, you've got, um, you know, the road bumps up a little bit, but the tops tend to be level, and then the bottoms of the cars are angled. I usually start with the largest ones first, and I'm just looking for shapes here of the, you know, of the back of the car. This little mini here comes out a little bit further. Okay, the bottoms. Um, let's see, how about this one here? About like that. And then a little car after it. Then another larger car. A few more. Then there's this truck. And I noticed that the edge of the truck is right at the center, about the center of the canvas. So it looks like I'm on the money with that one. Then there's another little car here. That is usually all I'll do, is just divide out each individual car. All right, so I have a number two natural bristle flat. This is a Utrecht 209. It's got, you know, kind of long, fibers here and I like to use this to scrub in so even when I'm doing little shapes I want to get that sort of scrubbed in look all right and I've just thinned the um, paint with a little bit of odorless mineral spirits and let's see here I'm just gonna kind of start mapping things out going for a sketchy kind of approach it's gonna be windshield here and then a little bit of a windshield here. I'm just looking for dark shapes at this point. Um, there's a, and it doesn't have to be uh, super accurate. Although I, I try to get, I try to have it as accurate as possible. But I'm just looking for at this point. I'm just looking for uh, the darkest darks. And I'm going to put those all in. This is probably the most complicated part of a painting like this. And I've had people say, oh, you should just leave the cars out. But when you're doing a cityscape, and, and I mean, I know there's painters that do that, but when you're doing a cityscape, I mean, in San Francisco, the cars are one of the main features. And I think they're an opportunity for some fun abstraction. Uh, so just because something is difficult, you know, um, doesn't mean you should leave it out. Although I'm not opposed to that. I mean, there's times when, you know, I'll struggle with some little detail in a painting, and then I'll end up leaving it out, like a sign, like a light post, or some other, some other thing. But I feel like that's different because those. I mean, if you start leaving out cars, that's such a major part of a cityscape. It's a major part of what you. Um, see in the city. All right, I'm gonna get this truck in here because um, I know that's at the end of the line here. Now the thing is too, if if they don't line up exactly, you can. It's easy enough to add another car. Um, they are very abstracted. Okay, and then there's another car here kind of bumped up like that. And 
and then obviously there's the tree around it. Okay, so already you're starting to see that these are cars just by you know just by the shapes of these dark um, or these little dark shapes, right? And let me add a few more. Like the grill often is the grill of the car is often a good uh, another dark defining feature. Um, as far as the light portion under the car, like I, I tend to put those in afterwards if I, if I put them in. Instead of getting specific about the colors of the individual cars, and I want to be sure to get the midtones. I want to leave them dark enough so that when I do put all the highlights on the cars, uh, that they really, they do really stand out. And I can come in and add some touches of color to these cars if I want to. Um, you know, at the end, just put some variety in the colors. But for now, I just, I'm really focusing on values, actually. Uh, these cars in the distance here, there's not a lot of, not a lot of defining features on them. Um, they're very much, they get darker along here. I could almost just paint them all in and then just come back with highlights and that'll define these cars back here. All right, and I'm gonna do an exaggerated blue-green. A lot of these windshields tend to be tinted, like sort of a blue-green color. I'm, I'm definitely exaggerating it. This one here for the truck will need to be lightened up. Uh, it's kind of fun to put those little pops of color in. like blue green color now I'm going to come in with some lights here but these are not my lightest lights uh, what I'm using here is almost like a dull gray made out of ultramarine um, but a lot of times what I'll do is just do like what I did with these cars here just kind of color the whole thing in dark and just come in and put a few highlights so in a way we've got two lessons here one is uh, you know, just simply putting everything in dark and here a little bit more detail, which makes sense because these are f closer up, so they're larger, so a little more detail is actually okay. It's kind of a cool thing. Okay, now I've got a, this is a number four Blick Scholastic Wonder White. Uh, it's kind of a, I don't know, this was inexpensive. I think it was like $3.00. And um, it's just kind of like a liner brush in a way. This has been really helpful, actually. I kind of like it, even though it's inexpensive. Now, this time I've got medium. I'm using medium, and I'm coming over this scrub in, kind of reinforcing darks. Kind of trying to work quickly, too. This is a mixture of ultramarine and alizarin crimson, my go-to dark color. And as you notice, it's particularly dark along the bottom of the vehicles. So reinforcing that. Uh, obviously where the tires are, that's kind of dark as well. And then the tops of the windshields, at least some of them. Some kind of reflected blue on this windshield. Notice how I have this line off at an angle. It doesn't actually do that. It goes the other way. It goes like that. So I'm going to start paying closer attention to some of these little uh, shapes.
And again, more detail, putting more detail, doing a little bit more detailed work here than I usually do just for uh, illustrative purposes to show you guys what I, you know, the process. Um, and I repeat, I would do, I would actually do this level of detail on a larger painting, but something this small, probably not. Although I might, you never know, depending on the mood I'm in. Reinforcing some of these darks. Kind of cleaning it up. I don't want little pops of light where they shouldn't be. Sometimes I'll make headlights, I'll change the value of the headlight to make it stand out just because headlights are one of the defining features. It's almost like a facial feature of the car. So I'll do a little, um, you know, value shift for the headlight, either make it lighter or darker. It doesn't really seem to matter. As long as there's something that makes that, you know, gives a hint that there's a headlight there. Okay, next step is going to be the sky is kind of almost a purplish color so the reflection on the cars is going to be um, you know purplish in color so I've mixed some dioxazine purple with white this is this also has medium in it and just start applying some of this thicker paint Also, I'm doing the cars all at once just because I want to illustrate the process. Uh, normally, I'd kind of work, uh, I'd do all of this and I'd, you know, I'd kind of work dark to light on the whole painting, but that's going to take a while and I just wanted to show you guys this process here specifically. And you can be impressionistic, uh, certainly impressionistic with your application of, um, of these highlights because, you know, you're just suggesting. All you need to really do is like, so it doesn't have to be exact. Nobody's going to sort out, you know, all of the reflections and, and, uh, and call you out on it. It's just more, you just want to get the basic idea, like on the tops of the cars, there's always reflection. And then usually on the side of the window and then also along the, the side of the door right under the window, right above the wheel well. All right, so I will show the painting at the very end, but here, Here's a close-up of what the cars look like. And I may add a few more highlights, but as you can see, it's probably not really necessary. Um, within the scheme of the whole painting, they're rather small. But, you know, just suggesting them seems to work. All right, so here is a close-up with some of the rest of the painting uh, filled in. And I'll scan out here a little bit. Um, this painting needs some work still, uh, but it's pretty close. I need to like fix, uh, there was some bushes over here. I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave those. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys the cars. So there it is. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this little demo. Let me know what you think in the comments. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters. There's a Patreon link in the description below. Uh, I've got a bunch of Patreon only videos, informational stuff, uh, supply list, that, that sort of thing, and it really helps support the channel. So if you're interested, like I said, link down below. Other than that, stay creative and I'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.